Hello, I'm Pete Gerlach. I'm the author of the nonprofit Break the Cycle website. That website offers eight self-improvement lessons that I've learned from 31 years of being a family systems therapist from well over a thousand instructors, my students and clients. Lesson five in this website is about families, about how can you improve the functioning of your family. The first thing you need to do, if you're interested in that, is understanding some basics about families. That's what I want to provide in this video. Let's start with, what is a family? How would you define that to a young person? I'd say it's a group of people who are either connected to each other by names, by ancestry, and by genes, genetics, or people who don't have any of those connections and they do have emotional bonds um, with or without kids. Both types of families may or may not have children. So those are two fundamental types of families. There are lots of subtypes. There are biological families where everybody's connected by genes and ancestry, history. There are step families where one adult is parenting the child or children of their mate. There are foster families where both mates are nurturing someone else's child. There are adoptive families where people take legal responsibility for parenting someone else's child. There are gay families. Um, there are childless families, as I mentioned. And all of these may either be formally legally married or not. They may be cohabiting. So there's lots of variations among families, but they all have some things in common. Uh, incidentally, any of these families can be described as nuclear. A nuclear family is who lives in the house of a child, or uh, who are the genetic parents of a child when children and their parents live together, and any other caregivers or adults who are present. That's a nuclear family who lives in one house. An extended family is all the relatives, it broadens to include all the relatives of the people in a nuclear family. So that includes great-grandparents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, in-laws, cousins, a whole network of people who relate by blood or by law or perhaps by emotional bonding, depending on your definition, to the people who live in a nuclear one-home family. People who are divorced have a two-home nuclear family, one for each divorced adult and any custodial child or children. So there's lots of types of families. They all differ in some ways, and they're absolutely the same in other ways. Why do families exist? Pretty basic question. Have you ever thought about that? Why in every age, every culture, every society, why are families common units of um, society. Why? I propose it's because families are the best among all types of human groups, except perhaps kibbutzes, um, of filling everybody's needs. A need is a discomfort, a physical, psychological, spiritual discomfort. All people, embryos, infants, children, teens, adults, all of us are needy all the time. We oscillate between comfortable and uncomfortable, right? Has that happened to you today so far? So the reason families exist, in my opinion, is because they are the best human group at filling all members' needs most of the time. That raises the question, what needs? How about these? First of all, we all need security. 
families often are said to be our first refuge in times of trouble. Ideally, a healthy family provides its members with a feeling of safety and security. Have you experienced that? An obvious one is families provide each member with the sense of feeling loved, pride, uh, proud, uh, respected, uh, affection, value, acknowledgement. Love is a complex subject, but ideally healthy families provide their members with the feeling of love and the chance to love other people. Would you agree? Have you experienced that? Another primal need that healthy families provide or fill for their members is the need to belong. Most people feel best if they feel, in addition to security or related to their security, they feel like they are accepted, known, and valued in some sort of human group. Often, families provide that to the best quality. You can belong to many groups. Uh, you can belong to the Kiwanis a Drama Club, a uh, dog racing club, uh, nature hiking society, political debating society. We all can belong to various groups, but the one that provides the most satisfaction on a deepest level for many of us is family. So that's a need that members try and fill by belonging to a family. We need encouragement and support both in troubled times and as we grow. We all grow, we all change all the time. Hopefully we're all, quote, maturing. That raises conflicts and problems. And as we go, as we grow, we need support and encouragement, especially from people who love and value us and whom we trust and respect in the best of worlds. Have you experienced support as you have matured? Have people encouraged you to become all you can be? Is that, is that your history or no? Would your kids in future years say that you're providing that for them? Growth, support, and encouragement. Another thing, another need that families provide, better than some other groups, is a sense of personal and group identity. All of us have, on some level, the question, well, who am I? compared to all these other people swarming on the planet. Who am I? One way across the ages that families have helped to answer that question is, I am the son of Ian McDougall. I am a member of the Wu Ling family. I am uh, a member, I'm the son or daughter of John and Mary, or Jose and Maria, or uh, Canute and Heidi. I know who I am because, in part, of who my parents were, who my ancestors were, and what my last name is. Would you agree that that is a need that most people need to fill? Where can you fill that need outside of a family? Another need that people and families provide for each other, feel for each other, is companionship. Yes, you can get companionship elsewhere, but it's nice over the years to establish a history of companionship with people you know and trust and respect and who come to know you. Um, it may be a deeper and more satisfying type of companionship than that with some strangers. Another need that healthy families provide their members is the need for appropriate, underlying appropriate, touching. People are happiest and most contented when they get to some level um, caressing, hugging, affectionate kissing, and of course, as 
another category of that is sexual intimacy. That's obviously a very complex subject and it falls within the needs that families provide its adult members. So touching in an appropriate nurturing way is a need that healthy families provide their members. Finally, some families fill adults' needs to procreate, create, and nurture children. Some adults have that need, some don't. So families are traditionally the, the safest and most ex accepted way of filling that profound primitive need. Notice we just come across a lot of information here. Let me recap. My proposal is families exist to fill a variety of needs for all adults and any children who belong, whether they're biological, step, adopted, foster, or neighboring kids who just hang out. The needs are these. A need for personal safety and emotional security. A place where you feel love and can give love. A place where you feel you belong. People care about you, are aware of you, and value you. A place where you can get support and encouragement to grow and to work your way through troubled times, including grieving. Families um, feel the need to have a personal identity, a need to find companionship among people who love and know and like and trust you, a place where you can get appropriate hugging and touching, caressing, physical contact, and a place where, if you choose, you can co-conceive and nurture children. You can make new humans in a healthy family. Yes, you can do it outside of a family also, but it's often more stressful. These are the needs that family members strive to fill with each other. So what? Here's what. When you hear the term dysfunctional family, I now hope you will think, oh, that means it's a family where members are not getting some or many of their needs met enough, often enough. That's what dysfunction means. Functional families, all members, get most or all of their needs met well enough, often enough. Uh, it's the subject of another video as to what determines how function, how functional family is, how functional your family of origin was, and your current family is. There are a group of factors, uh, but you've had enough factors in one dose, uh, dose, I suspect. So let's continue that in part two. Um, again, just to recap, this has been an introduction to the complex, vital subject of families, your families, your early family and your present family, and that of your mate, if you have a mate, past or present, it's important to understand this information in order to build a high nurturance family or to improve the nurturance level of your family. Lessons one through four in my nonprofit website show you or prepare you how to do that. So I hope you will study lessons one through five and the related YouTube videos. Thanks for watching.